Welcome back to the OPL Headspace Round. Still coming at you with more League of Legends action. And we have an absolute banger of a series right now on our yeah. hand. Legacy Direwolves, it's 1-1 in the television wars, as it's been dubbed. And I cannot believe how clean and decisive yeah. that game was out of the guys that have trees on their jerseys. Yeah, absolutely popping, to be I honest. I didn't it, know what to call them then. <laughs> just... The Lega Tree. Lega tree you know, it's interesting because we talked about earlier in the day, Order haven't beaten the top five team. Obviously, uh, they were successful. But AV, sorry, Legacy, they've beaten Sin, Tectonic, then Tectonic again coming in. They haven't beaten AV. They haven't beaten Chiefs. They haven't beaten the top five so team So they haven't either. beaten the top five team either. But now looking like they actually are within reaching distance of beating the Direwolves top spot. It's a day of first. And, yeah. you know, it's not just like one game they snowballed it, they look good. Game one, they, they also had an early well. advantage. Yep. They could have won that game. Some mm -hmm. decisive play out of the Direwolves. And that's what I like to see. I like to see when a team has an advantage mm -hmm. that they play confidently with yeah. it. And Direwolves did it game one. Legacy did it game two. Now it's a coin flip. Yeah, 100%. I feel like they might have just got their mojo back, Legacy. And this could be the upswing. Mimic, we mentioned time and time again, actually having an, an impact that game. TPing, making his way to multiple plays, not just uh, side laning, PVEing on the Fiora. Yeah, and it's always so interesting to see this because I feel, and this is where the Chiefs were so successful when Radiant and Swiffer were massive. Okay. You didn't need Swiper playing carries. No. So yeah. then he played things like back then the Maokai and the Scion and mm -hmm. did it to great effect. And I think that when you have Claire playing so well, Mimic doesn't need to be a damage threat. Mm -hmm. He needs to be a get the heck off Claire threat. Yep. And that game he was, and the rise was like, Absolutely monstrous. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of the coin, you look at the Diawas, right? King and Cupcake kind of struggling, I think, in this series so far. But you kind of, Juice mentioned it on the couch. He thinks Chippy should be off the tanks. And if he can't rely on the bot lane, and I feel like I agree, he needs to be back on these champions. He's proven success with back on the things like the Camille so that he can be the one that uh, has that productivity that can be doing the damage. Yeah, potentially could be the case. I feel like the map kind of fell down around Chippies. I mean, yeah. Chippies didn't contribute didn't to them losing, bad. but he didn't contribute them to yep. getting an advantage. Mm -hmm. So I can understand, especially into Scion. Is it first pickable? Here we go. Bands. Zoe, Talia, Melzahar, Azir, Gangplank, Skarna. Lots of mid laners again. Legacy going back to that. Mm -hmm. I got to bet we don't see a Kalista. Okay. They're just going to fall through. Nobody's going to pick it up. Maybe we see second, again? second phase ban. I don't think anyone wants to take that bet. <laughs> okay. Just didn't look like it worked. That guy, however, looked yeah. like it worked. Yeah, absolutely. Successful. Decoy putting himself on that one again. And we just going back to his roots, going back to the Brawn one trick. And potentially you can pick the Camille up here. However, mm -hmm. you still just get shoved into by the side and you outscale eventually. Camille just true damage on her second Q is yep. disgusting. And, and that's what be. Chippy's gonna play. Uh -huh. I mean, there was potential for flex, but once again, similar to the game one draft coming out of the Diewolves. Diewolves pick their own champions more than anyone else in the league. Yeah, okay. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. I like to think that Sharp is like, you know, we can potentially pick mid lane here or support. Like, do you want Alistar to go into the matchup? And Chippies is just like, Camille, lock it in. <laughs> just, just hates trading, you know. Really not a, not much of a merchant. But we'll be the Ezreal locked in once again. Very similar comp to game two coming out of Legacy. Just going back to what worked. Yep. Had the early advantage. Actually transitioned it. Got themselves a Baron. You got to respect it because there's just already so much scaling. You are not on the clock with this comp. You have three of the best late game team fighting champions in the game. Yep. Ryze can 1-3-1. One, one. It's just a flexible comp. And that's what you really want out of your first three. You want a core that can translate it. And if you are Legacy right now, ban Alistar. Yep. Get rid of it. Possibly ban away something like the Tarek as well. No bot lane picks up for Diawals. They do match the rise with the Orianna. We've seen a little bit of that this year, but... I reckon that you ban, I'm going to call it, Rakan Alistar. Okay. Because you don't want to get Zaya Rakan either, yep. now that they have an Orianna. That Tarek, makes a lot of sense, You don't actually, really yeah. give a stuff about. Mm -hmm. Give a what about? Stuff. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, it could That's have the been one. It will easily be the another... Adjective. Yep. Good, yep. good use of it. Yep. But, will be the Rakan. I feel like it makes a lot of, a lot of, a lot of sense. I uh, kind of blanked on that one, honestly. You don't want to be giving away the Zyra Khan, especially with an Orianna. Just the Wombo available from that. In 2018 is not really a year you think about Wombo, but there's kind of this, like, one comp. Unless you're the Chiefs Esports Club, yeah. in which case, you're a very good Wombo team right there's now. A, there's only that one, and it really does revolve around having the Zyra Khan in the bot lane. I mean, I feel like Galio, Camille's, like, top lane Scion and stuff like yeah. that. There is some Wombo potential into it's it. It's not like traditional Wombo, because I yeah. feel like Wombo requires, like, a big one -shot. circle abilities. Yeah. You have, like, a Moo Moo, Orianna, like you have a Galio ulti. Yep. But uh, Scion, you know, doesn't. 
not quite up there, but it will be oh. what you said. Rakan in the alley. Lucio has cooked up a good draft <laughs> here. I am a big fan right now of Legacy's drafts. I want to see what Diables hit back with, though, because they are like good players of Sivir. They're good players of, you know, maybe it's a Caitlyn Jana game. Yeah. And they just try and break open turrets. The Diables are by no means a one-dimensional team. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, they do uh, look like they're going to take away the turret, but they did take Sybil. Off the Zac, obviously game one and two played that one and found his way into multiple lanes in game one and two, like every single time has a big influence. So trying to put him back on something is uh, not as comfortable on. Jarvan potentially yep. could be the pickup here. Does he go for the Kha'Zix and try and have a little bit more early game Ooh. impact? I would like to see a Scion. It is. No, but they go with a Fiora. Fiora. Okay. Once again, Mimic feeling confident on this pick into the Camille. I feel like last time, this was the matchup for game one. It was into the Sejuani Camille. They got that early gank off, and he felt like he really couldn't bully him around from that point. So do we replicate that one? Do we see it once again? 10 seconds for Legacy to decide Gragas. what their jungle is going to be. I actually wouldn't mind Gragas. He mm -hmm. farms very quickly for a tank. Also has some good disengage. What are your thoughts on the comp? Yeah. I feel like I agree, and I also like it in terms of how it can actually influence topside. The Zac can do almost just absolutely nothing. He's really going to struggle to get up there, but we, if we do see Sybil on the Spellbook, that uh, early flash cooldown yep. does uh, give him a lot more agency on things that he would otherwise be able to pick up. King, does he go for Vayner? He does. Into the Ezreal. That's a ballsy pick for Game 3. This, I love King. This has Stryker. potential to just be the Dial's first loss of the season, and King's like, hey, man, I'm going to pick up the vein. Hey, I've lost two laning phase. <laughs> yeah. Give me Vayne. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love it. Like, I genuinely think that King is one of those players that I feel in the last two years has really grown on and off Summoner's Rift. And mm -hmm. I think that his maturity even shows through his play and the confidence to be able to take what is a counter pick. Vayne should beat Ezreal because doesn't get pushed in hard enough and then scales incredibly well. Mm -hmm. If you ever catch the Ezreal out, absolutely tear him apart. Not to mention if you ever find yourself against a Fiora. I mean, Vayne's pretty good at dealing with uh, yep. sticky top laners and stuff like that. Right, that will be the lock away. They do have good scaling on the side of the Diables for the most part. Vayne, Tarek, Oriana, things like that. Uh, good potential there, but you have to look at the other side. You have a big, beefy frontline, Gragas and the Braum. Rise, Ezreal, Fiora. Yeah. They just want to be tearing up the map. 1-3-1-ing, one, Fiora in the side lane. They want to be able to put him there, and Mimic wants his team to not commit on the other side, because that's what keeps happening. He keeps picking the split pusher, and then the four on the side of Legacy keeps getting baited into a fight. At the same time, I want to see Mimic just ult someone and try and kill yep. them. Because he was farming really well in that Fiora matchup. Mm -hmm. But I don't actually think I saw him use his ult that whole game. Does he go Ignite? Does he go Spellbook and Ignite? Yeah, or does he just I go TP? So. No, I think Spellbook and Ignite is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I play it in a similar vein on a different champion, which I'm not going to say because you will say it invalidates my point. Mm -hmm. But I think that you can use <laughs> Spellbook in a top lane position for genuine kill threat. Yeah. And then if you can, need to commit to, like, late game, he can go exhaust. You versatility, yep. Like, but late game against Camille, exhaust is such a good summoner spell. He can go teleport. Like, it is so much easier to play around it. And he's done it again. Absolutely love it. Streaming onto Summoner's Rift. Headspace round Saturday night. Thank you so much for joining us. It's game three. Legacy taking on the Dire Wolves. Television Wars Extraordinaire raid looking for a what Klepto is this? Proc. Yeah, they're looking for a bit of an invade. Braum level one is uh, incredibly good, but Dire Wolves know what's happening right now. Do they? Yeah, King's rotating up, getting a little bit of vision because they know they're there. They saw, I mean, you see raid in the mid lane, you're like, right, come on guys, this is a three game series. We haven't seen that at all. Something's going on. Raid just wanted a Klepto proc. Yeah. There were a whole heaps of crazy level ones that <laughs> Order was doing. Okay. To try and them. generate klepto procs. Hit me with them. Like sending people top lane and try to check brushes. Okay. And we saw a couple during the OPL. Claire once again on the rise. Big proponent of that spellbook as well. So both uh, mid and top lane, both solo lanes will be picking that one up for Legacy in this here game three. Oh, the Fnatic. That's an old school skin. Yeah, it is. That's actually, people would be like, who was the Fnatic jungler that got that? That was actually Shushay's skin when yeah. he was an AP Gragas player. Season one dream hack. He, oh, dude, that interview where he's like, he picks up the water keg and he's just uh, yeah. doing his Gragas cosplay. Rips the shirt off. Oh, what a legend. Actual legend. So I feel like so many people watching, I just have got to have no idea who that guy is. That's such a long time ago. That's eight seasons ago. Yeah. AP Alistar and AP Gragas. That's what he was playing. On the same team as Peke. It's Peke back then. Do you, that's when League of Legends was old school. Just to take a time or back. 
Was that N rated support? Yeah, but Peke couldn't get time off work, so missed the first day of groups because it was a Friday. <laughs> Or high school or something like that back then. <laughs> and actually came in day two. So Fnatic went 0-2, had to come through like loser brackets and steamrolled Hell everyone. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's actually real cool. Uh, uh, back in the infancy of League of Legends. Legacy look like they're going to be hitting level two first. We see uh, both Targon users, but Cupcake's hitting pretty far back. Ray does E forward, try and get a bit of damage. He did it in the early game, but no. Nah. Not going to actually commit to that one. Stun can come out of Cupcake, so. Yeah. Stun into a heck of a lot of damage yep. also. Just don't want to give away that. I think they were trying to zone off that one creep. Didn't work. Obviously, stun not going to register there. And Raid actually turns around and does a boatload of damage. And once more, Shernfire actually walking over a ward. He's looking to invade onto Sybil. We'll find no camps in the top side no by the walls that he's doing. Sybil. Or from Shern. Or from Shern, as you mentioned. Does this cost him? He's actually Ooh, he committing actually to it once in. again. Sybil's yeah. tanking the camp. Sybil could just go over the wall if he wants here. However, got the smite available and rotation is already coming out. He has a body slam. There it is. And in comes Claire. They ward over the wall. Extended root duration. And Shern has to flash. Might have been off more than oh. he can do. And he gives over double buff to Mimic. We saw it game two. And once again, Shern with the greedy invades. Priority for Claire in the mid lane. Nets him that death. Mimic looking. And that's the flash out of Chippies as well. Can't even hook shot over the wall. That's two big summoners burn on the top side of the map. Mimic double buffs in this matchup. Going to make his life infinitely easier. And I keep saying this, but Shern goes for some engages into the jungle and teams go, wait, we can't touch him. That's Shern fire in our jungle. Mm -hmm. Give it all up, guys. But they collapse. They do the right thing. They play discipline League of Legends around Sybil. And it comes up huge. Legacy have sold their stock in the Shern fire effect. It bites him in the ass. Game two here. Game three as well. Advantage gold lead over to Legacy. The kill went to Mimic. We mentioned double buffs up there, bot lane. And he's kind of like game two, it really hurt triple in the mid lane. Yep. He wasn't able to get rolling. Triple fell down a couple of times. This game, I feel like it's going to really hurt Chippies because mm -hmm. now he's got double buff as an opponent. And uh, he's already got biscuits and things. This lane's going to get difficult. He's already got Ignite. Camille. This is a laning Fiora. You know there's so much bully potential coming out of that. CS is even, but it's going to get worse and worse as time goes on. See if it happens again. We saw him uh, second death as well over to uh, Triple in game two. Yep. Did not was, learn his lesson. Yep. I mean, didn't even learn his lesson between games here, Decoy. I'm going to queue that uh, cannon creep there. If you can't reach it in your melee support, specifically the Braum, you can uh, proc Relic Shield from range with your abilities. Not to mention they gave him a maximum gold value. Yep. Three assists onto First Blood is like a thousand gold. Mm -hmm. So you can see that will be the gold lead right now. Need to mention the fact that bottom lane started double target. Yeah, they've actually gone super greedy here. Out of the vein, Tarek, they uh, know they don't want to be winning lane. And also Cupcake, most likely going to base and recall into the tier as well. Yep. So they uh, have nothing to do with laning phase. They just want to stay away from the Azura Bomb. Lane Farm priority mid, possible. lane priority top right now for Legacy. So Sybil well, actually takes it. away the whole camp. Says, hey, Shern, and Shern turns around and fights him, trying to kick him out. However, Mimic is here. Slow will register. And Shern gets chased out. Yeah, we'll be fine. Loses the camp. Shern fight actually looking for more. He hits the plant. Oh, actually will Sybil be spotted him now. Out. Can see that Claire has roamed yeah. up as well. This is real. This is the old school team counter jungling mm -hmm. effort coming out of Legacy right now. Yep. Do, does he actually commit onto the golems? There's pings going out. They still have priority. Chippies will have the shorter track. The big golem is gone. However, that's a good combo coming out of Sybil. We'll turn, uh, steal away one. And this is kind of a battle ward. When you're winning in the yep. push, you can afford to go in and not get camps off the jungler, but just make sure you keep eyes on the jungler. And the big thing is on the other side of the map, this lane from the Dire Walls aren't going to be able to punish the bot side. So, mind you, both these lanes are going to be fairly happy to scale up. There is a, a bit more aggression capable of Legacy's bot lane, but... Yep. Spellbook Tarek is TP back to lane with a tier. Double Relic Shield. They're not going to be fighting anytime soon. So there's no real threat of a punish on the other side of the map if Sybil does play this Battle Ward style. Yeah, and if Sybil somehow manages to get into that bottom lane, we'll be able to do a lot Ooh. of damage. As Claire, that's a pretty slick combo. Yeah, that was smooth. Claire's actually opted into not wearing the glasses today. He's gone for the contacts. Yeah. And Legacy are winning. I actually... That's the start of a tradition right there. I am a big fan of not wearing glasses with those headsets. Yeah. I'm a big fan of not wearing glasses with any headset. Mimic's glasses, like the rims look pretty thick. That'd, that'd hurt over like a five game series yeah. wearing a headset for an extended amount of time. Chippies gets the uh, second prot onto Mimic, uses a hookshot out. Mimic has level six, however. Could just go aggressive now that hookshot is down. Uh -huh. Doesn't decide to go for it. Still has the ignite. As, uh, stun registers onto Raid, but nothing going to follow up. Yeah, Shurnfire briefly did show on Vision as he walked past the mid lane, that pink there. 
Just getting a few wards down onto the camps of Sybil on the bot side and goes back over the Dragon Ball. But yeah, you have to question Fiora. Mimic not going in, obviously had not recalled yet. Yep. Chippies had a base, had that chain. So obviously with that disadvantage, didn't want to look for any sort of all-in play. But does he actually swap out for the TP or I does he, he walk has back? To. I don't know if he can walk back with Chippies pushing in that lane. See whether he goes for it. Yeah, he does. Teleports back and that's going to be a team at plus. That's a very good first shot for yep. a Fiora. Going towards up. Ravenous. Already has the biscuits for Substain. Add that lifesteal on top of it. You feel like Chippies' life is only going to get worse. CS, I feel like despite the double buffs early, has been just very even. Chippies is actually up. But our Mimic will be catching that wave. But level 6 hit. See TP's back to lane. Yeah, I feel like Mimic took it and tried to give it back to Sybil when he went for those invades. Yep. And credit it, because Sybil is up 13 CS. Mm -hmm. He's got a Barmy Cinder versus just that Ruby Crystal. So I think it worked in that regard. Yep. However, it didn't out and out win the top lane like maybe we thought it would. Mm -hmm. The thing we haven't touched on so far is uh, Sybil's actually gone for the Aftershock on the Gragas, has not gone for the Spellbook. And we saw that made him really tanky in those yeah. invades. Mm -hmm. I mean, Aftershock early game also does a significant amount of damage. Yep. You obviously proc that one, you're a little bit tankier, but then the uh, damage comes through as well. He's looking for the invade onto Shernfire. Yeah. Does he actually commit? Potentially can go for it, trying to catch if Shern comes out the other does not side. Have vision. Doesn't have vision. Pink's oh. top lane, Claire's going top lane as well. They should call this out. Onto the Camille. You can see that Mimic looking for it. Sybil is underneath the turret, and Chippies just needs to get the heck out of Dodge. And he does. He respects the fact that they can be up here. Claire already has priority. If Shernfire can't cancel the Realm Warp, would be able to get up into the top lane fairly easily. He was complimented on this last time he played against the Fiori. He has no business actually fighting this one, especially 1v2. So right now he is uh, walking away. Shernfire is looking to come up and help him, but they. Uh, Oh, they're actually going to invade. No, they do okay, not. That's nice. a really nice do -si do That is an absolutely nice style there. From Chippies actually nets himself the wave, to be honest. The body slam is all Gragas has to close the gap. It's the start of his big combo. Good return damage. They oh. will actually get a good parry proc there. Mm -hmm. Nice parry and the true damage means you can't get through. But... Bot lane. As we'd expect, fairly even. Tear Sheen picked up by the Ezreal. Gets a nice base, but also matched by the Vayne. Obviously going for the IE shift build. Fairly standard across the board, but we don't expect too much happening. Ping's going on to the top side as well. Yeah, Realm this time they're available. bringing three, and they should be able to cancel any hop onto this wall. Ultimate already out. Big CC chain lands. Mimic gets another kill. And Legacy again looking good in this early game. Yeah, once again. And the bot lane from Legacy also rotating towards mid. Triple 1v0 has time on that turret, but Decoy will be enough by himself to actually force him off. So Ray can actually just go back bot, potentially catch that wave. And Mimic's gonna get solo first turret gold, two kills. This is the game we expect the Fiora to do big things. Yeah, and this is one of those split pushes that if gets accelerated enough, just repeatedly kills you. There's nothing you can do. She's too quick. She does too much damage. Gonna have flash more than you have flash. She'll Un take your girl as well. Unfortunately for the Direwolves, they had a poor roll there as well. That's an air dragon. <laughs> That's not an Infernal, that's not a mountain, not even an ocean. That's a bloody air. <laughs> Bit more move speed. Chippy's going to be running away real fast. But Mimic, as long looking as to chase him combat, down. Stun. Cupcake gets a stun. Deco uses the Guardian proc nicely. And actually, ooh, sneaky little Mystic shot onto Claire there. will break his shield. Uh -huh. He does base immediately, pick up that Ravenous Hydra on Fiora. He's actually walking mid right now. Top lane is so far pushed in, but they have a lot of vision control, but he's looking to look for something around the mid lane. Yeah, potentially, or... They might just go bot. Yeah, could just look for a dive. Maybe not the best call. I feel like Fiora is one of those champions that now, Shurn doesn't really do all that much to. Oh, Cast hits lands. him into the wall. Oh, they were looking just for some chain CC there. Yep. Claire calls off the play, however. Mm -hmm. Hits him into the wall instead of back into the rise, so they don't commit further. Don't want to expend an actual summoner. So they fish for Ooh, the play Mimic's with the ulti. actually in behind the Camille as well. We'll just be able to slide away there. Okay, now here's the question. Legacy's comp scales absolutely fine. Does he actually freeze this way or does he push it in? There's no dragon bot side. There's almost no potential of any engage coming out on bot side from a vain Tarek lane, really. So what I was going to say is I feel like Fiora is one of those lanes that you don't have to swap because she can sit at tier two. Yep. I actually don't think it's bad for Fiora to sit at tier two mm -hmm. uh, because she can slide away very easily. She's got things to avoid CC. So I think that he just keeps pushing and trying to create pressure. Mm -hmm. And if multiple members go up there, 
Then That's Legacy's window, bot yeah, side. Exactly right. That's where you look to get the Gragas into maybe the bottom lane. Yep, we've already seen Claire make his way topside. Chippy's Ooh, looking Chippy's for a going bit of betray, aggressive. But However, going. that's the ultimate again. Sybil's going up there. And just look how quickly does. Mimic is closing that distance. We'll be Ooh. able to get this slow as well. Gets another vital proc. Ultimate out of Chippy's. However, this Hook is going to be the solo kill. Mimic is on fire. Hook shot up in two seconds. Not quite enough for Chippy's burns the flash, but Mimic engages with his own. That's going to be the solo kill. Three kills to his name right now. Sybil up here as well. Complete control of the top side of the map for Legacy. And that's what I was going to say to make matters worse. Schoen also lost a 1v1 versus Sybil as that fight was going on. Did not die, but had to recall, which will mean Rift Herald is picked up. And this is a real, real nice game out of uh, the Korean top laner of Legacy. 100% here looking at the Rift Herald right now. Just going to take that one away. Claire coming over to do a bit more damage. Things are looking real rough coming in today. You look at Legacy. Losing twice to AV, you think, how the hell can they beat the Direwolves? Yeah, they're the fifth place team. Straight up. They lose to Chiefs, they lose to AV. Obviously, uh, potential to lose to Direwolves here, but they are, are in a commanding position. 2,000 gold lead, we're only 13 minutes in. Air Drake on the side of the Wolves. There's a fire up next as well. So potentially can use this Rift Herald to try and break mid lane turret. And Shern, again, is just getting chased out of the jungle. Mm -hmm. This is a team effort to repel Shern's counter jungling. And something that's really small, but incredibly impactful, is the fact that Legacy don't really have to burn summoners to do this. They just have complete control of topside. There's nothing almost Shernfire can do yep. if he goes up there to the Fiora. It's too far gone. Chippy's not going to deal enough damage. Hasn't even completed the Triforce, but... You have flashes on every other member of Legacy. You have the cleanse mid. Heal and Ignite still available for the Ezreal Braum. Mimic's pinging him again. So it's just so hard for Shernfire to try and punish on the other side of the map. They don't really have these tools, so they just kind of kind of cop it for a little while. Yeah, exactly right. However, they are scaling up nicely. Cannot undersell the fact that Triple is ahead of the clock by yep. 30 CS and is an Orianna, which late game can have big team fight uh, impacts. That's a swing champ. So at the same time, King, he's got himself a completed static shift going towards an Infinity Edge. We'll have a lot of gold, even though only 3 CS up has that double Targon's lane going nicely in his favor. Uh -huh. You have to think. Ahead in CS, uh, Klepto probably give a little bit more gold overall. That's true. Than the Targon's, but still will be keeping up nicely comparatively to someone who doesn't have either. Mimic right now. Just completely shoving in Chippy's in, getting some nice vision into the jungle. Setting his own up for the time being. There's uh, the rest of the Legacy kind of plays shallow vision for him, so he can expend his pink and his trinket further down. They're looking for something mid. Pings are going out, but uh, Claire's in base, so might just be forcing him off the wave. Good ward over the wall there from Raid and Decoy. And you can see they're just looking to try and control some of the area. You can see Chippy's trying to push in as quickly as possible. On a recall here, I feel like you can nearly drop Rift Herald and break bottom lane turret if they would like to. That is nearly expiring halfway through the cooldown already. Instead, they just match recalls. Minute till Dragon, everyone wants to be as strong as possible. And I feel like a question I genuinely don't know the answer to. Is, this, is, it, is it worth Cupcake hanging on to the TP? There's oh. really nothing he can do to TP topside and actually help out. Not if an Infernal Drake is coming on. You want an exhaust for yeah. the Fiora. If somehow she manages to get into a team fight without dying, you have to be able to stop her. He's stuck in this lane. Potentially should have swapped that out for a combat summoner. Maybe the exhaust, maybe the ignite if they can get anything going. Yeah. Even uh, something like the cleanse if they want to play super defensive on the bottom side of the map. There is CC, the Rise, the Gragas, the Brawn. <laughs> to get himself out of, but no, just, just does stick to that TP. Kind of uh, sitting wasted in his inventory for the most part. Does someone just sit in your inventory? I don't know where they I sit. I feel like they do. I feel like it's acceptable. Yeah, I feel like it's, I mean, I don't know where else you would say it is. As you can see right now, Mimic playing at the tier two, both teleports up and available. Mimic has his flash already, looking for potentially a mid lane play. Ooh, Claire. Claire got chunked by a shockwave. Yeah. However, does have Spellbook. Could get himself back to this play if they want. Direwolves now trying to force around Vision. Claire gets his recall canceled. That could just be it. Yeah. That could be the start of the play, and it looks like potentially Triple. Legacy are going to give it up. Triple might just be looking for another cancel here. Pushed in the wave, but no, he's just... Committing to the wave there. Mimic walking down. Claire gets back. Where is the teleport ward for him? He's peeing on the way. And Shern has to bail off. 
So they can just turn right now and start up Dragon themselves. There's no way Dire Wolves get back in yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely not. The choke, not good for them. Shockwave is still down on triple. So once they get forced out, no way they can contest. That's the Rift Herald drops bot lane as well. Pretty far away, so Dire Wolves will have time to react. But you have to think the outer with triple basing not going to be committed on by the Wolves. Yeah, exactly right. They might just look to repel, however. Rift Herald charge does a lot of damage. And now they can just sit here and spell fling. Stun. Barely misses. Onto Sybil there, but Rift Herald gets one charge and does not get the turret. Alright, so Dire will successfully repel for now. However, Demolish proc is about to come in. And I feel like that is it going to be falling down. King gets slowed up. Yep, Sybil. Sorry, Shanfire was looking to go over the wall. He placed that ward on screen right now on the left on the pink. Sees that one with Claire missing in the mid lane. They don't want to commit to a fight. Mimic. Rocking some vitals here and there, getting some chip damage onto Chippies in this lane. Yeah, and the big thing is Chippies can't sustain through this. Mimic, yep. every single time he gets access to a creep wave, just goes straight back to full health. Will go for a recall, poti uh, potentially going to pick up a Sheen and a Phage for himself. Silver lining is Chippies is uh, significantly closer to his base, so walking back to lane in between <laughs> every wave. Not as hard. Not as hard. I mean, Camille also has real big legs. They're Ooh. real long. And this is real interesting because potentially Ninja Tabbies means that it's harder to kill the Camille right now. Yep. So instead, they just turn it on their head. They're going to go fishing for potentially a kill in the side lane from Mimic onto someone like a Vayne. And then Duo's just going to pressure mid and Claire should be able to, once again, run over the top of Chippies because he is behind. Mm -hmm. 50 CS is what Claire actually has on him if they match up against each other in that lane. It's going to be super rough. We take a look at the gold lead. Mimic significantly far ahead. That's over 2,000 there. Jungle, fairly even for the most part. Mid lane, fairly even as well. 80 carry, 300 between them. So that is the Klepto to the Relic Shield there. And Decoy actually behind in gold. Yeah, that's interesting because no Targon's proc coming through for him, I guess. Yep, that's going to be the Relic Shield by King. But it's pretty interesting. I guess they are going for that Arden Center. You see a lot of Tareks go for things like the Locket nowadays, Redemption, even the Zeeks. You don't see too much Arden Sensor because it's pretty greedy to go tier and Arden Sensor. Yeah. But in this matchup, they do. They have double auto attack champions if Chippies can get into the team fight. Well, the Not to mention the Vayne. The team fight win condition is like literally put an invulnerable king in there yep. with an Arden Sensor and hope he pops off. Yep, he has to. It is hard because you have so much uh, CC coming out of the Legacy lineup. If you get hit Ooh, by a Braum King. Claire wanted King there. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many things that King actually has to worry about. Flash Gragas is very reliable. Braum passive, very reliable. Not to mention Flash Rune for his Anata Rise, very reliable. There's so many things he's going to have to play yeah. around. Probably going to have to invest in a QSS fairly soon. Completely agree with you. I mean, Flash Body Slam may as well be a click, like, point and point click and spell. Because you literally just get into motion with it and then click on the champion and hit the flash button. Yep. As we see potential jockeying around this. Flash oh, Body Slam is. straight away and lays him nicely into the wall. That will be the ultimate use as well. Shurn will get stunned up and potentially will fall down. Shockwave. Huge shockwave at a triple layered CC with Shurn. So no one going to die. Health bars pretty low for Legacy, but they do have the extra member triple. He's fairly low on the backhand side. Can they actually do anything to the turret? Oriana wave clears fairly good, but Claire posturing forwards. Looking for that stun, does land onto the Brawl. Fantastic stun, however, on the back end, that's massive damage going on to King. Ultimate will land. Meanwhile, in the top lane, he's oh. actually going to be able to pick up the 1v2 kill. Shutdown goes across for Shurnfire. Maybe would have liked to have left that one for Chippies. Yeah, he does pick that one up. That's going to be red buff over to him, but Mimic did burn the flash of Chippies. That makes his life easier going into the game. Has TP still available, but in the side lane, will be able to pick him up that 1v1 again. Shonefire going bot means that multiple members for Legacy can stick around. Without the Tarot Culti, they have no hope of holding that turret for the Dial. So they do just back away, get themselves a recall. We see this once again. See how Mimic does it. Parry, nice on the true shot there. He's actually using it less for the CC and more just for the damage coming out of Chippies. Obviously able to proc that ulti. No, doesn't actually. Chippies playing against the wall nicely, just waiting for Shonefire. But the flash coming out, the outplay out of Mimic. And Chippies didn't have to go for that play. He had Shurnfire coming, but he wanted the kill. Thought he could win the outplay. Yep. But Mimic respects it. And does trade. And now he's got himself a Trinity Force and a Revenous Hydra versus Trinity Force. Double Ruby Double Crystal. Ruby. That is a massive advantage in the 1v1. Not to mention he's got himself on a level advantage. And he just has priority over this lane. Has not had to sit on the Ignite this time around. Uh -huh. Completely different Fiora game coming out. 
as uh, Schoen gets tagged up. Oh, it's actually pretty lucky that Raid could not get in auto range there. You have to think if it could apply the auto, apply the slow, can follow him over the wall with the E, but just out of range. Raid doesn't want to uh, cop a shiv proc to the face. And unfortunately, right now for Direwolves, no one can man uh, match Claire. Mm -hmm. You would think that Mimic would be the split pushing problem, which he is, but I mean, Claire just able to shove up a lane. You can see that Triple isn't matching it. He's kind of just catching it as it goes into turret. It's basically like a 1-4 versus a 1-3 run, but also the fact that Mimic is just the significantly stronger side lane, so he's getting uh, the resources. Direwolves yep. are floating towards his lane, Shown which does open check. Claire up. You can see lots of on the way pings right now. Realm Warp. That's a Big. huge keg onto the back line. Ultimate already burnt out of Cupcake means that they will be invulnerable for a little bit. Huge Ultimate also coming out of Decoy. However, they don't continue the fight. Big engage coming out. That is the one cooldown gone from Cupcake. They're looking at just taking the next dragon. Already have themselves an Infernal. Is do it they Infernal? bait? Or do they just set up for the dragon? Not sure. It's going to spawn here. Will be the second Infernal. Yeah, already engaged will be there. Mimic is here. Shockwave onto two members. Ultimate lands as well. Mimic falling very low. Will fall down. Teleport coming in on, oh. uh, from Chippy's Hextech Ultimatum will land. However, he just gets King. Absolutely erased. Bounce is there as well. Oh. Huge damage right now coming out of Claire. Will flash forward. Any bounce? Slow there will mean a triple kill. And Claire is a monster. Second Infernal Drake will go over right now for Legacy. And the gold lead extends to 3,000 here. But the big lead is in these Infernals. They pick up those kills. Three, four, one. Mimic falls down. But Chippy's looked for the flank there. Got stunned up immediately. Braum is so reliable at locking down a backline threat. Chippy's just gets auto attacked. And basically, that's it. This honestly looks fairly decent overall the shockwave lands on two and they do cc up the gragas and king is doing significant damage in this fight but chippies lands immediately gets knocked up goes on to raid and that auto attack means he gets down he's stunned on the wall but this is the bounce coming out off triple here no actually off king cupcake falls so incredible there was potential that this bounced as well but he puts enough distance between himself the fruit obviously slowing down the Tarek. Means they do not pick up any further kills, but that will be the Infernal. Yeah, triple kill for Claire now. That means that that lead has been transferred again. The Cleanse Rise will be an absolute menace as Shern tries to catch out Raid. Raid needs to be careful. No QSS has gone an incredibly greedy build. Similar to King, honestly, both AD carries playing with fire here mm -hmm. against a ton of CC. And I feel like it's pretty interesting that King doesn't because he has the Ardent Sensor. It's not like he's lacking damage. Yep. We saw already... In that fight, he was uh, putting out significant DPS. And this is a scary part of the game for Legacy, because now you're starting to believe. Mm -hmm. You come into this and you say, you know, on our day, we will be able to beat any team. That's what every OPL player should think. However, now 25 minutes in, double Infernal Drake, massive advantage on your split pusher. They've they got to be able to regain composure and just, you know, and the Baron. Out. That question has not been answered. Trendfire, no. Will just dash himself out. But a lot of pings going over to it. Game two was uncontested. They, they haven't solved their Baron problems yet. I mean, they're looking to. This is a very decisive call. You can see Mimic has teleport. Shern gets a ward into the pit. However, they're still sticking on it. Shern is a higher level this than Sybil. They have to they peel back. off. And I think that's the right call because right now, Mimic is just zoning chippies away from the turret. All you have to do is keep Shurn in the Baron pit. Yeah. Mimic will win you the game. Chippy's approaching half HP there, just healing back up slowly. Mimic has complete priority. That's the free turret going over to the Fiora here. 4, 2, and 1 has so much kill threat if Chippy's missteps. And he's onto the inhibitor turret now. So much sustain coming out of the Fiora. We mentioned it time and time again. And Legacy looking for more on the top side. Shurn wants something here. Not able to land that flail. Potentially could have been the go button, but you can see Mimic is just unrelenting under these. Oh, decoy. decoy. will have to hop away. Will not oh, get stunned. Barely just escapes the dazzle range there. And the big thing, setting up around that Baron, Bane was actually walking bot. King was trying to shut down Mimic, and obviously Legacy had to pull the trigger on the Baron, so nice play out of them. They don't commit through with it, but they force King back to the floor, and that does net Mimic the TP. Yeah, Mimic must have a big gold advantage, uh, gold shop right now because you can see items starting. Yeah, two thousand. If you don't mind, that's uh, he's chilling. Wonder if he goes. I was going to say, does he go for a BF sword for a GA or something like? Back in the day, you used to go like bloodthirster, and then he you just sustain through QSS. everything. Goes to his mind. I like it because if you get CC, there's still a potential that he is squishy. He falls down. QSS plus Sterix would make him a actual legitimate threat in team fights. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just cop a Sejuani ult in the face and like then not be able to parry. Like or game one, game one. Yeah. Yep. Basically, that's literally what happened in the last team fight. He goes down immediately without having an impact. King 
looking for some damage onto Civil right now, but Legacy setting up the 1 3 1. You see Chippies is walking over. This is their window. They're trying to take control of the Baron once again. Do Legacy collapse, or do they just let Mimic continue pushing this one out? I mean, I think that you just trade the one pink ward. Yep. And That's just let got. Mimic get all the priority. They're going to now re-sweep this pit. There's pink wards still available for jungle and support. Shurnfire didn't even have the sweeper up, and uh, Cupcake swept their own jungle. So all they literally clear is that pink ward that gets immediately replaced. Legacy with uh, almost complete control of the topside river right now. King once again is floating towards Mimic, or just might just be looking at a wolf camp. And Triple, if he gets a Void Staff, there is a team fight win right now because there's three items on King plus an item sensor, potentially three items going to be there for Triple. However, they're collapsing onto Mimic again, who has taken a trade right now with the top laner. You can see Triple is behind him. He's already hitting the turret. Mimic will just slide away through the base. And Into the base. Yeah, that should be the Baron call right now. He's Ooh. teleporting there. Shockwave potentially going to come here. Oh, it does. So it will land, but that could just cost them the Baron. No stun. They will use a Hextech ultimatum, and they will be able to pick up the kill. Can Direwolves now this take 50 -50. this fight? Shurn is higher level, so it's not even a 50-50. They turn. They prioritize oh, the, the jungler. Pit? He has to jump out of the pit. They should just prioritize the Baron right now. Sybil should be able to smite that they one away. It. He does. But the fight is on. This is a 5v4. Triple now across. Shurn going very low. Stunned up target. And now Legacy just have to head for the hills. They will take the two kills. But Legacy get Baron. But that's fine. Mimic lived for long enough. In the base, the ult is where you. Shockwave, you mentioned, is the team fight win condition for Dials. But unfortunately, they had to use that to cancel the TP. Chippies and Triple late to the party there. They do secure themselves the Baron. And Legacy, despite two members being dead right now, have to be happy with that option. Yeah, they certainly do. And that was decisive again. They turn onto Shurn, they chase him out, then they burn Baron. And you could see the call was for the carries to live. Claire still has the Baron buff. Raid still has the Baron buff. That means two of the lanes will be able to continue it through. And really, Mimic doesn't need the Baron buff for pressure. And the cheekiest thing, Raid actually buffered a Mystic shot through the CC. I think he got uh, stunned up by the Tarek, and that's the last thing that hits the Baron to put it into smite range. So Sybil picks that one up. And as you mentioned, Mimic doesn't need, this, need the Baron buff. Three members of the four for Legacy have it up. Also Claire in the side lane, so... See pings right now onto Dragon coming out of Mimic, potentially going to look for that one. Claire, meanwhile, top lane. He is actually the uncontested member in the 1-3-1. Yep. Because whilst Mimic it looks much more flashier, Claire's just gonna sit there and turret someone in the head. Mm -hmm. And uh he's a 302, 320 CS rise. However, Dragon is up and available. They're just going top. Legacy don't care about the Infernal. They have two already, so they're just gonna use this time. Mimic kind of uh showing his head, but if they can break the base here. Yep. Potential value for Legacy right now. Eight second, no Baron recall available for the Diawards because Legacy picked that one up. Can he cancel any more recalls? He cancels Ori. Yep. Big deal, King. Can cancel King. No, didn't get go out. for it. So you see multiple members of the Diawards now back. Claire, however, oh. turns around. And that is one combo of spells. Already pops the Sterics. Chippy says, hey, Triple, go deal with your lane. I'm going to go find Mimic somewhere. Not to mention, Legacy didn't even all commit on topside. They're getting damage on the mid lane, but... This does mean the turret will go down. Claire trying to finish that one up. A lot of pings going out. They're looking for the is rise. Is this the team fight? Shurn goes in. He gets Claire. Hextech ultimatum is there. Claire falls down. That's the shutdown. Invulnerability onto King means that he can just chase forward. And Legacy scatter to the winds. Mimic pinging out that mid lane turret. Can he do enough damage? It's falling fairly low, but Shockwave still available for triple. And Legacy splitting their resources. Might just mean that they don't actually get an inhib with this Baron. They have to back away. Claire. Dead for another 30 seconds, so Direwolves. Nice Ooh, hold, actually cancel. Sybil, what are you doing? It was just standing next to a wall, cancelling in no, uh, basing in no man's land. He's going to get chased down. He's going to fall with the Baron. This should not be happening whilst Legacy have the Baron, but they still have the gold lead 6,000 in their favour. They traded that Infernal Drake. That wasn't like they set up a siege and then they just couldn't break the base. That was an active trade they opted into. For a decent objective at this point into the game, you mentioned four in Oriana for the Vein. That's going to give them a decent damage boost, and they split their lanes, they split mid-top, they don't actually take down an inhibitor. And now King has a QSS. Triple has himself a Void Staff. They've put the gold back within 4,000. It is absolutely nothing at this stage. The gap would honestly be between uh, the two top laners. You would have to think that everywhere else, it is relatively equal at this stage. Uh -huh. I mean, even not in gold, but Arden Sensor as well for the Vayne. So he's sitting on four items. 
as is the Ezreal, but then he has that extra boost, and Mimic's actually gone back for the Ignite. He's opted away from the TP. He knows that if Legacy can set up this one through one, he's a short enough distance between the yeah. outskirts of Direwolf's base that he can just he can actually just walk from bot to mid, from mid to top, things like that. Doesn't need the TP. So that's the ideal play. What happens if Direwolf engages on his team right now? Oh, that's a big chunk of damage. That is a huge chunk of damage, and Raid says, I do not want any piece of that. Please put the door up in front of me next time. Uh -huh. Obviously, has the Bork, so we'll heal back up slowly. Double buffs as well. And they just can't get priority, which means that uh, Diwolves right now are hovering between the two lanes. They chase away Mimic. Now they can show back mid lane. They're able to balance the waves nicely. However, Legacy at the same time with the Rise, now trying to attack that top lane. And this is where the fact that Mimic doesn't have TP comes up huge. Because yep. you look, they cannot commit to that play because Mimic will be too far away. They want to go top, but they're just not getting enough mid priority. These waves are just meeting in the middle. Both team is clearing it out, so neither of them can really commit to a side lane. Chip is, you mentioned, his TP's not quite up yet, but he's actually grouping. No vision for Legacy spots him out, so Mimic knows he's not in the side lane contesting him right now. They don't really know where he is. 33 minutes into this game. 10 minutes ago, it looked like it was done and dusted. It looks like Legacy, we're going to be able to win. Direwolves, however, resilient as ever. You can never doubt the champions. Able to bite back in this game. They've brought it down to one team fight territory. Yep, but big deal, honestly, right now. State of the map, two minutes away from the Baron, which is a fairly long time. But... Triple having to catch the top wave means that Legacy do get access to the top side of the map. Shurnfire might have just been rooted up. Yeah, takes a lot of damage. No stun going to be proc there. Oh. Also gets some shields as well, so we'll stay healthy. Decoy, oh, however, decoy has caught out, flash. has to burn the flash. And look at King just streaming forward. I'm honestly surprised he didn't actually flash forward and just commit with the ulti. The move speed could have kept chasing that one. No members of Legacy were around. But in saying that, I was just mentioning the vision control top side. Legacy Ooh, looking civil out of the face check. check. Shurn just burns the smite, will be able to retain his Raptor camp. You can see Mimic no longer winning that split push very hard. Triple is just basing in front of Decoy. Decoy they has no flash commit. Now. Decoy no flash, uses the ultimate. However, oh, Claire is not there. Them. Very nice ulti out of Sybil to just throw them back. But that is really their only engaged tool, so won't have that one available. No sweep is available for Legacy right now. Shurnfire going to use his own to sweep out some of this uh, vision. They're just trying to contest the open inhib, inhib on top side. But without this uh, big cooldown from the Gragas, it might be hard. Actually, two members of Direwolves are mid. How do you contest it without Gragas and Decoy's ultimate? I just don't think you don't. I think they have to call that one a draw, back away. Mimic still level 18, trying to pressure. But this is that thing, that one window where Claire can just continue to push in the top side and Triple actually has to go answer. It means they push up mid enough. And the wards in the top side, besides the pink in the pit, have just timed out from Direwolves. The sweep is coming through from Legacy weren't even up. They didn't sweep out any vision, but they just waited long enough that they have timed out. So there's only one ward in the pit right now. 18 seconds until the Baron spawns. Decoy might be see, caught again. Decoy is caught. Door is already up. He's going to get burnt down with nine seconds left on the Baron. Direwolves get a pick. And two minutes worth of jostling in the top river for Direwolves. Nets them a pick, you mentioned. Base might just be channeled out of re Raid. Looking for a recall. Crab is up, so they know if Dai was going on Mimic to this one. Mimic has ignited. I feel like he though. has to commit. I feel like Mimic right now needs to look for a kill if they're going to have anything to do here. Oh. Sybil throws his head in. They're going to look for a snipe potentially with an Ezreal ulti. It doesn't work. They give it up. Elder Drake is only 15 seconds away. Direwolves can just go towards it. There's still 10 seconds left on Mimic's death. Uh, sorry, Decoy's death time. Yeah, he's going to spawn actually after the dragon, then has to walk to the pit. So do they just get both? Huge buffs at this stage of the game. The gold lead 3,000, pretty negligible for 35 minutes. Means absolutely nothing, and they go towards it. They start it up, and Legacy look like they are not contesting this one at all. Baron buff is going to be acquired. A two dragon Elder Drake will be acquired. And Direwolves, I think they're back in the lead. Absolutely here. Gold lead, completely irrelevant right now, momentarily, momentarily at least. Gonna just do so much more damage. Vayne at this point in the game, four and zero, has not died yet, neither has triple. If they land a shockwave, King is literally just gonna clean the floor with Legacy. Yep. But on the other side of the coin, I mean, Ezreal, Rise, no slouch. Will be difficult so far. A lot of turrets to get through for the Diawals. Legacy have had control, thinking back for the most part of the game. Only uh, two going down total. So a lot of standing gold for Diawals to actually pick up. Triple, pretty close to his... Uh, 
Death Cap, but doesn't quite have it yet. Doesn't quite have enough to finish the recipe off, but they're looking five man in the mid lane. You can see that is a completed item for Mimic ahead of Chippies, but he hasn't been able to kill him. Still got the Ignite. He still wants that 1v1 team fight. But Chippies, he's not an honorable jeweler. Doesn't want to give it to him. Doesn't want to give it. Why would you? Isn't Camille the Grand Duelist? Or is that Jax? Uh, it, I don't know. Is that Fiora? Oh, is that? Yeah, that's actually Fiora. Yeah. What the heck? She's the lady with blades for legs. <laughs> I think that's her official title. Okay. Pink. Uh, Pink dashing forward. Look Ooh. how big that shield is. Yep. You see the ball zoning them all away. Kippies will take some damage. King's a little bit slowed. However, turret mid lane. Two of them broken. And I'm honestly completely adamant that the scariest thing in League of Legends is when an AD carry can front line. Yep. At this stage of the game, he has the shields from Tarek. He has the shields from the Orianna. He's so safe to do this, has the QSS, has lifesteal as well. Not to mention his tumble crit will be doing so much damage. Shiv proc, rapid proc, i.e. means he crits for more as well. He's got no armor penetration. He's got himself the Bloodthirster, the Merc Scimitar, i.e. and double zeal items. Where's the boots? I want the Trinity Force to come out. Yeah. Sheen proc with all that stuff going on. Uh -huh. Just doesn't care. Not enough armor to warrant it in his mind. Frozen Heart really the only one for the Gragas Zeeks. On the Braum and of course Frozen Fist on the Ezreal, but uh, no one's really stacking anything. Not a squishy, sorry, not a tanky lineup for Legacy. No, it certainly isn't. And this is a lineup that uh, Vayne excels in, to be honest. Deathbrush set up right now. Three members in there. They don't pull the trigger on. Camille is still mid lane, and they're still confident enough to just rush forward. And Camille's going to take their base, honestly, at this stage. Why is Sybil Mimic, sorry, grouping here? Does actually lose the mid lane tower. Knows he can't win the 1v1 right now because of the Elder, but uh, could have cleared out some form of the wave. Elder will be wearing off fairly soon. Baron does last longer, but so they're continuing the push. Base is broken. Gold lead in the Direwolf's favor. What was a game that looked all legacy is now going to be so difficult to win. Sybil's falling down massively in experience. Shurn is three levels higher than him. Just hasn't farmed for ages. Straight up has not had a camp in a significant chunk of time right now. Sybil doesn't even have rank 3 ulti. Shurnfire approaching max level. Multiple people max level right now for the Diwals. Both carries and the top laner as well. Matched by Claire and Mimic, but uh, Raid not quite there yet. And I mean, what can Mimic build to swing this game? Did he go tanky stats because he feels he has to team fight? Something like a Ranjuan's Omen? I feel like it's less about the build and he just needs TP. He needs to have the pressure in the side lane. But, of course, with the map control the Diwals have right now, Obviously, in a 1-4 composition against a 1-3-1, one, one, you can't hold the split. But if Legacy don't get to set it up right now, because of the Baron, because of the Elder, Direwolves just have complete control. That means Mimic really has no grasp on anything. Orianna's got herself a new hat. She's looking stylish. She's got a book. She's got a mask. She's got a uh, walking stick, and she's got her hat. Ooh. Ooh, flash over the wall from Chippies. Will that, get himself out of that danger. That is a huge cooldown. Trading Chippies Flash for the five minutes of Sybil. That is a big deal. That's their one really reliable engage tool coming out. All they have is a Braum. All they have is a Rune Prison. Rise can't be trading up with King. The auto attack's just too strong out of the vein right now. Yeah, slows will start landing. The dash forward. They're trying to start a team fight here. However, they just cannot find the one that they want. Leg uh, Die Wolves are kind of tickling at them at the moment. They're keeping them at arm's reach. Yep. Trying to, keep, to uh, keep them a little bit keen on the play and then taking objectives from around Legacy. Mentioned objectives. Baron spawning in two minutes. You have to think this will potentially be the Baron that will end the game for the most part. Direwolves did uh, break the base of Legacy, but honestly, mid and hit, not the hardest thing to deal with this late in the game. You push those waves out fairly quickly. Yep. Not super relevant like a bot lane in hit. You don't have that uh, sixth man pushing on the other side of the map. Uh, mid lane priority is a big thing forward over before you actually walk into the Baron pit, before you walk up the river. Legacy trying to set up some control right now, but Double Sweep is available for the Die Wars lineup. Chippies, sorry, Shonefire and Cupcake, both have those, so they can just push this one out, push out the mid lane. King actually sold his boots for a GA. Extra safety coming out of the vein. All right, so B of Sword picked up for Mimic. Hat picked up right now for Claire. So they're, they're done. That is the maximum items you will see this game most likely out of the Legacy squad. At the same time, GA picked up. That is a full six item plus the Saucy for good measure. <laughs> he does damage. He does so much damage. The Vayne, already level 18, six items. Absolutely monstrous for King. Was surprising in champ select, honestly, looking at things like the Sivir, stuff like that, but then just locks in the Vayne. 
wasn't really impactful early game, but hey. as soon as Dire Wars were in control, he's been dishing out tons of damage. He will, if he does not die in the first two seconds of the team fight, he will win them the team fight. Mm -hmm. Vayne is that kind of champion. Yep. That she either dies or you die. Mm -hmm. There is no middle ground. Yep, she Legacy. Is so quick. 30 seconds on the Baron spawn. They're looking to bait them in, but that pink ward is in the pit for Dire Wars. They haven't actually cleared out the vision. You can see Shern steps forward. King with the ball on him will use that extended range. And do they go? And how the, big the shield onto King is. And the tanks are kind of just frontlining for the whole team, but the big thing is Schoenfire actually has flash. If he gets caught out, he can use that summoner to get to safety, but Sibyl does not. So Side eventually... In favor of Legacy right yep. now. That's a huge wave top lane onto an open inhibitor. Bottom lane also starting to stack up. They see Chippies now. Can they do anything with this information? Can they do the Baron? Claire still in mid lane right now, has the realm off. They do actually start it up. Pink Ward is there. Dials have complete vision right now. They know what's going on. 8,000 health on the big purple worm. Do they just back away? Yeah, they look to back away. Sybil will re-leash. Oh. That shield onto King is actually growth. BT, Tarek, Oriana. Sybil's actually kept the leash here. So they will just continue to do Baron. It's going to be Mimic very splits. low. Mimic is split. You can see they engage onto him straight away. Will be able to flash away. No falls down. Baron is picked up, however. But for now, for 60 seconds, it is a 5v4. Can they do enough in this 60 seconds? They have one minute to try and break the rest of Legacy's base. Baron means they will defend a little bit easier. Red buff probably just going to be taken over by King, but they're looking for bot side. That inner turret is still available. Standing gold on the map. You have to think Legacy just going to leave that one for free. 4v5. They've wasted 20 seconds walking down here. Can they survive? Another 40. I think that they'd actually just give up this turret. You can see they leave the keg there. It's going to pop. It does a little bit of damage. That's an AP, Gragas. They've pushed out mid lane as far as they can. The barrels will just keep being there. They're missing crucial skill shots onto this wave. You can see big nice damage jump. coming from Claire. That's a big deal on the only real front line coming out of the die was Tarek. Tanky, but not that tanky. It does mean that they forced Dialos to back away. Mimic, we mentioned it earlier, has actually opted in for the exhaust right now. Yep. Used his flash to try and live in that situation before. But doesn't really need that one. I think onto King. The exhaust might be the most yep. impactful thing. Onto Triple if he gets a shockwave in a big position. This could actually be a game winning summoner spell at the same time. I mean, Claire, Combo Mage. There's an exhaust available for Cupcake. I mean, it's pretty interesting. In the development of this meta in Oceania, you see so much Ignite in the bot lane. You even see Janus taking Ignite because uh, everybody wants that lane priority bot. It's yep. just so important. We don't really see games going to six items that often. And that's really where the big impact of exhaust comes through. You can you see can they QSS send Mimic away. for the lane. Does not have the Baron buff. Doesn't have Teleport. Needs to be careful because Flash is available on Chippies, about to come up and on Shurn already. So you can see, as soon as he goes to a side lane, they lose priority. Immediately, King looking for damage here. Sybil does have the flash available. Didn't want to look for it there. GA still unpopped on King. Really want to see Claire's AP. I know it's a strange thing to look at, but at this stage of the game, I feel it comes down to Claire versus King. Who does more in this team fight? Inhibitor back up and available. Oh, Sybil, very close to being in range of that Hextech ultimatum. If he couldn't get over that wall, that could have spelt disaster for Legacy, but Elder Drake spawning again. 40 seconds. Mimic's gone top lane. That's... Hasn't got the Baron-empowered recall. 30 seconds, and Legacy actually go back. They do. That is a late reset for an objective coming up in less than 30 seconds. They will be able to walk to it in time, but they won't have any control. No wards around that. Nothing further than their red buff. They do still have Baron. And there's a lot of pings. They're trying to get mid-control. They're going to have to walk down the river, face-checking into the die walls. But 10 seconds on that objective. 1,400 spell flux bounces right now. Die walls have split. Can Sybil pull the trigger onto the team fight? Just you see Claire moving forward. Has a flash. Has the ghost. They instead will just trade positions around the Drake. Oh, they split onto Mimic. Mimic oh. has been caught out. Hextech oh, ultimatum, nice. however, gets ultimated and does a lot of damage. Can he get the last vital proc? No, he can't. Sybil now in the middle of the team fight. Chippies had Hula Hoop. Actually, no, it was onto Raid. Raid oh. is so low. King goes low as well. Flashing forward now is King. He's full health again. Onto Raid. That's the bottom lane dead. And Mimic and Claire are trying their best. Triple kill for the AD carry of the Direwolves. There is the Tarek ultimate. There is nothing they can do. Tr uh, Chippies takes that kill. They will jack this mid lane wave, however, 
Direwolves can look to now end. They have a single cannon creep, so the debuff on the turrets will be enough. Claire can't do anything to destroy this one. And 45 minutes into the game, Direwolves in a game they were losing for a significant portion here, look like they're going to take the win. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case. You can see that Claire tries to go to the other inhibitor. He gets flashed on. They will take him down. And King will just prioritize the Nexus. Direwolves take it 2-1. What a series. What? just happened. That game was actually a 300 HP difference between who won that. King got so low. Claire got the full combo onto it yep. and King just survived. Barely lives and then the shields come on, come on on top of that. So he's at 300 HP, one auto from death, but immediately put back up to over 1500. He lives. And as you mentioned, as soon as Vayne doesn't die in that fight, he just completely eats up the legacy lineup. Yeah, and that was a big thing for me. I mean, it started with a good parry onto a Hextech ultimatum but it ended with Vayne going absolutely bonkers. Mm -hmm. And that one hurts for Legacy. It As does. I said, when you start believing, when you're in a position to be able to take over the game, when you trade a base turret for an Infernal Drake because you think it's going to win it for you, yep. and then it doesn't, comes back and bites you in the bum. I feel like they could have got more. If they just put all of their members in the top side yep. instead of splitting them to mid, they could have potentially got an inhib or something like that. I Those few like, seconds matter. I feel like Claire should have committed onto Chippies. I feel like both the split pushes in this game yep. had windows where they could hard commit and they took the chunk and started hitting turrets and inhibitors, things like that. Yep. It's just a, a decisiveness thing. But Legacy was so close. You can't understate that enough. That mm -hmm. was the closest I think Diables have come to losing a best of three this year. Not to mention Legacy is a team we've seen struggle in recent weeks. We saw, we've saw we only really seen Diawals uh, struggle against Order. That was the only other one that went to a three-game series. And now Legacy... Chiefs went to three games. Sorry, you are correct. But uh, yeah, like they can bleed 100%. We've seen it time and time again. Diawals are touted as like the up-and-up -up best team. But I feel like Legacy have shown it today as well that uh, there's potential. But whilst they bleed, they also have arguably the best mental fortitude in the league. Yep. Falling down like that. Being put at such a disadvantage, you know, giving up a couple of barons, but the ability to be able to regain composure and fight mm -hmm. themselves back into games is really impressive. Yeah, I feel like I 100% agree. That was the one of the few games we've seen go to actually max items there, and that team fight was so incredibly close, we can't understate it once more. And that was a game also before that team fight even erupted. There's multiple times where Legacy actually split off, and you're like, can Diawals get the pick? Camille, so close to locking down a single member. Yep. But then we see the Diawals have to back away as well. When Legacy pr get priority, they split off. So incredibly close, if one team could pull like the trigger on that engage, and it could have gone either way. Yeah, exactly right. But it was the Die Wolves in the end that picked up the 2-1 victory and talk to their victorious AD carry right now. Let's throw it over to Laura, Juves, and King. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we are joined by the victorious ADC. My voice just died. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Congratulations on the 2-1 win. Um, were you confident heading into this series, and what was the team expecting? Um, I wouldn't say we were like. I think we were confident as a team, but in the week of practice leading up, because we have a really strict, like, we have a schedule where, like, if you're late for scrims, we will, like, just straight up cancel the scrim. Like, there's no, like, playing around. You're late, you don't get to play, you're ruining it for everyone else. And I think twice this week, we got two cancels, because one, I went to lunch in the city, and I got back late, and we got cancelled. And then another time, Shannon and Steven were late, and then got another cancel. So I think overall, I had only four blocks of scrims. Which is like compared like compared to like the possible ten you could get in a week, like it didn't leave me feeling the best for <laughs> this game. Do you feel really guilty when you're the reason for scrimmage? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's the that's the point of it, right? Like yeah. you were like you made everyone not get practice, so yeah, I felt pretty bad on that day. I wanna ask you um about game two because it was very rough for you guys, but what was said in the break going into game three? Um oh well, personally I didn't want to play like a champ where like you have to win like Calista is like obviously she's not the best late game champ so you need to like win la lane really hard early and I think I made a few mistakes in the early game in game two which led me to not like getting lead at all so I'm just like you know what just give me Vayne he's gonna play Azure. I just want to scale and know, yeah um, that was the plan Bryce was out. a big fan of you picking Vayne up in that game but uh what were the comms like in that third game when you realized you could turn it around and take the win uh, I think I don't think we knew we were going to turn around because that <laughs> the, the Camille Vest Fiora was looking really bad, but I was just like, give me six items. I want, I want, I'm not going to lose this game. But yeah, I think I just, we wanted to stall because the big problem we have, because like, we're sort of not used to playing from behind. So we just like to fight. Like, we're in behind, fight, 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 fight. So this game, we changed like what we did in game two, it was just fighting to just, you know, scaling 
We've got Vane and Oriana. I just wait for team fights. Yeah, and yeah, I was going to ask you about the main pick, but um, do, do you think that's like a... Is that because is that like a comfort pick for you? Or do you think like picking Vane there, like 1-1, one, one, you said yourself the last time you were on the couch that you weren't happy with your performance um, yeah. in that game. Did you have the confidence to just pick the Vane and you're like, that's it, boys, this game's on me? Or was <laughs> it more like a, no. a team comp and you were like comfortable pl- practicing the Vane Oriana 6,000 health shield? <laughs> like, I think for me personally, it's because... Um, I have a, like, after MS, like, after MSI, I learned how to play, like, I think I talked about this last time I was on the couch, that I want to be able to play any champion whenever I want, mm. so, like, I can never get banned out, and I was going into, because I like dropping myself into later p- uh, parts of the draft, so, yep. I think we got, I think we got Oriana third, because Steven really wanted a good matchup yep. mid, so I'm like, alright, I'll drop down, so you can get the comfortable matchup, and I think it's really Vayne in particular, it's just, like, Vayne looks best there. Yeah, that's I'm fair enough. Vayne into Ezreal was like always a decent uh, lane yeah, as well. Uh, it's more the scaling part. Yeah. And I guess the last thing, and this is like for the people that play solo queue at home, because I know a lot of people <laughs> struggle with this as well, is like, I think it was, no, uh, it was no secret that your top side was kind of crumbling a little bit. Like there was, it was going downhill. It was, it was, it was sinking a little bit. Bad, yeah. Sinking slowly. Um, and most people have that problem too, I think, that play bot lane. is like the other side of the map is just sinking. What would like... What was your mentality in that game when you know your top side's losing? Um, and what would you say to like the people at home that struggle with that, I guess? I mean, we just, we knew like late game, like the big thing in solo queue that's different to like better games. Yeah, like, of course. You, like, you're like, oh, I got a full AD comp and my top lane is inting. We can't <laughs> win. <laughs> but this game, like we knew we had the better late game and I think we just have to hope and like a big problem that people have is like when you're behind, don't try to like bite off more than you can chew. Don't try to go for that solo kill that might just make you even further behind. Mm. And that's what I think we did really well in that game. Yeah, you did. Next week, you're going up against Order after the 2-1 win today. What are your thoughts heading into that series? <sighs> it doesn't look good for us that we just, like, 2-1 Legacy. It was, like, a middle of the pack team right now. And we have to rest Order, who's in second place. So it's... I think it's more on us. Just we need to practice a lot better. Like, don't like, be, like, to scream to them can so yeah, well, you came out with a win today, so congratulations Thank on you. that. I'm sorry, Jubes, you got your prediction wrong after swapping. I, I swapped. Wait, what did you get? Well, <laughs> no, I swapped in spite of Ejim. I didn't swap. I initially said that I was going to 2-0, so you got me wrong either way. <laughs> um, so thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry, everyone out there. Jude, thank you so much for joining us on the couch as well. It's been a pleasure having you and your banter. Um, and don't forget, guys, it is our Headspace round. So if you're looking for information or advice on mental health, head on over to headspace.org.au slash League of Legends. And don't forget, we also have that live chat coming up on Tuesday, the 27th of February between 7 and 8 p.m. Information on that can also be found at headspace.org.au slash League of Legends. But to close out our second day of the Headspace round, let's throw it back over to Jake and Bryce. Thanks so much, Laura. Really good to hear from King after that game. I like it. Just, you know, give him six items, put Uh it on his back. That shows a player that is a big game player. He's willing to step up for his team and credit to him. Picked up that triple kill in the last fight and really put him over the line. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you were talking about mental fortitude. You've seen Schoenfire bounce back in the order series. Game two, literally inting, and then game three here against uh, Legacy. You saw them turn that one around to uh, great success. All right, as we take a look at the day's results, it was Order picking up the 2-0 victory over Avant before Diwolves took down Legacy 2-1 in a very close Television Wars series. Mm -hmm. However, that does mean that Order is now top of the ladder. Diwolves, while yet undefeated, are only 18 points. Tomorrow will be Sin Gaming kicking us off against the Chiefs Esports Club before Bombers take on Tectonic in a series that one of those teams will walk away with a victory. Two o'clock tomorrow. Money where your mouth is. Who is it? Bombers? Tectonic. I think I'm going to bet Tectonic. Woo! I feel like overall, Bombers, on paper, they have a better roster overall, but I feel like Tectonic, honestly, just look like a better team. They come together. I feel like Cyclone's been putting work in over the weeks, and they have been slightly improving, like, week by week. Bombers feel like they have potential sleeping, like, kind of has looked good. Getting to week to week, like, second time placed off, uh, faced off against Chippies looked all right, but uh, honestly, I feel like... Team versus team, Tectonic might have it. Hot fire. He spits that. I mean, can't argue with the man. He is the analyst on the desk. I'm I'm an unbiased play-by-play caster. That is all the League of Legends actions we have for you today. Two o'clock tomorrow is when we come back with the last day of Headspace Round. But on behalf of myself, E. Jim, Laura, as well as Jews. Why did I call him E. Jim? His name is Bryce. Entire production crew. Hungry Jacks. Get me the heck out of here. Let's go.
Ward over the wall. Extended, extended root duration. Root and Shern has to flash. Might have bit off more than he can do. And he gives over a double buff to Mimic. Ultimate already out. Big CC chain lands. Mimic gets another kill. Mimic is closing that distance. Will be able to get this slow as well. Gets another vital proc. Ultimate out of Chippies. However, this is going to be the solo kill. Mimic is on fire. On the back end, that's massive damage going on to King. Ultimate will land. Meanwhile, in the top lane, he's actually going to be able to pick up the 1v2 kill. Shutdown goes across the Shurn fire. Shockwave onto two members. Ultimate lands as well. Mimic falling very low. Will fall down. Teleport coming in on, uh, from Chippies. Hexec Ultimatum will land. However, he just gets... Absolutely erased. Bounce is there as well. Oh. Huge damage right now coming out of Claire. Will flash forward. Any bounce? Slow there will mean a triple kill. King! Raid oh. is so low. King goes low as well. Flashing forward now is King. He's full health again. Onto Raid. That's the bottom lane dead. And Mimic and Claire are trying their best. Triple kill for the AD carry. As you can see that Claire tries to go to the other inhibitor. He gets flashed on. They will take him down. And King will just prioritize the Nexus. Dialogue's taken 2-1.